If you've ever been involved in amateur radio, you probably know how important it is to keep a repeater system running properly. Without it, your club members and hams in your local area won't be able to connect with each other. Because of how important this is, we want to share with you the basics to programming a BCR repeater system. Today we'll cover how you can program a channel and user with the programming software included with your BCR. So the first thing to do is pull out the programming software that we sent you. It'll either come on a CD or we'll send you a link that you can download. Uh, I've got mine in here. Let's see if I can get that to pull up real quick. I can just... Bring that on over here so it's on my desktop so it's easy to find. Go ahead and launch that and it's good to go. After that, come out here with the cable that we provided to you. Hook up one end to your USB. And then utilizing the front port on your repeater. Just plug that in. Go ahead and power on the repeater then. Now we come back over here to our programmer. And in this top left corner here, there's a little white page. You're gonna click that and select the uh, model of repeater that you have. And you'll note that on the UHF ones here, we've got two different frequency ranges. Most of you guys are probably gonna be in this one, but if you're doing something special, we might be down in here. Um, we're gonna be using a 40 today. Uh, also, at this point, you could set a password to lock out other people from programming your uh, repeater, but that's not necessary for our purposes. So first things here, we're going to set up the channel. You can come in here and you can select a channel name. That can be anything that you want. Um, I'm just going to use my call sign, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. This isn't broadcast, it's just for your own usage. Next uh, is the remote access code. These are the DTMF sequences that you would punch in to remotely access uh, the repeater. By default, we always set that to one, two, three, four, but again, you can set that uh, to any sequence that you want. Uh, up here is the station ID. This does have to be your FCC issued ID. Uh, the only modification is sometimes people will like to put a uh, backslash R to indicate that it's a repeater instead of uh, their personal use, but that's not necessary. For broadcast interval, this is how frequently the repeater will identify itself. We usually set that to 10 times, or once every 10 minutes. And then of course the uh, TX rate is how many words per minute that uh, is gonna come out at. For the broadcast uh, activity independent, if you check that on, the repeater will broadcast itself every 10 minutes, no matter what. If you have that unchecked, the repeater will only identify if there's been activity or transmissions on the repeater in the last 10 minutes. Over here, you can set the receiver frequency for the repeater, which today we're going to set that at 450500. Uh, the channel spacing right now is only allowing us to select the 12 and a half, but once we enter the transmit frequency, it'll open it up to 12 and a half or 25. Uh, CSQ repeat, uh, typically we don't like to use that. It gets a little fuzzy in there, but if you have a, an application where you don't want to use a PL tone, of course, you can check this box. And since we'll be using a PL tone, uh, I always set the COS here to valid signal instead of carrier. For the transmit frequency, of course, you got to have that offset from your receive frequency. So I'm going to set that to 4. Now the power setting here is on a scale. If I hover this, it should show you. If I can get that to hover. There it is. If you hover over this, it shows you a, a 0 to 995 scale on that. That does not equate to a specific power output. It's more of an arbitrary scale. Uh, so 250 isn't going to have a specific watt amount that it will equal on uh, repeater to repeater. We set this up uh, before we ship out the repeater, but if you have a watt meter, of course, you can go in and tweak that as you need. 
uh, I find that 250 is a pretty good place to start. And we check pre-emphasis here so that you can have a nice crisp, clean start to your audio transmission. Uh, underneath that we have the transmit timeout. Uh, a lot of people like to have this set to 180 seconds or three minutes, but you can set that to uh, a whole wide range. I think it's zero to 999 seconds. And the courtesy tone delay, this is the amount of time that there is between uh, the end of the transmission and the uh, courtesy tone beep that will indicate that you have accessed the repeater. For cooling fan operation, you can select TX only, or if you want, you can have it continuously uh, circle air. I suggest against doing that unless you're in an environment where it's very, very hot and very humid, as the fans uh, are pretty obnoxious to just listen to if you're sitting there on your desk. Once you have created the channel that you're going to be utilizing, you can come into that and select different users that can utilize different uh, PL tones. So you can have multiple groups utilizing the same repeater and the same frequency without talking over each other. Uh, we're going to start on the user one slot here. We'll come back to sysop in a minute. Uh, I always set the name of the user to the PL tone or DCS tone that we're going to be using. So that way when you key up on your radio, it'll show up on the screen of your repeater uh, and show who's talking. And of course, you want to have this set to active. You can program in other users that you can activate later if you want, but we'll keep this active. For your receive tone, you can come into this and cycle through all the standard tones. We're going to use 100 today, just for the sake of this example. And for the transmit, you come right into CTCSS, and we'll scroll down to 100. If you wanted to set up a DCS tone, of course, you can do that in here as well. Here you can set the hertz for your transmitting courtesy tone. I like to set it for 1,000. And the hold time can be adjusted in this window over here. Uh, we have a range of 0 to 9999 milliseconds. It's pretty common to go for 1,000 milliseconds, which is just one second. Here you can toggle the tone in tail on or off. If you have this on, the PL tone will remain active for your hold time. Otherwise, the PL tone will drop out. Uh, this has an influence on whether or not the receiving radio will stay keyed up. Obviously, if you don't have the tone in tail, the receiving radio will drop as soon as your audio stops. Now you can go over here and click OK. We have your user set up, and you can see uh, that it's active code type, the tone and code, uh, timeout over here, or your tone and tail over here, and your timeout. Now the sysop user is a special user that is only utilized for accessing the remote programming features of the repeater. Uh, you want to set this tone to something other than your primary user tone, so that way not just anyone can get in here and adjust users or any of the other functions you can do with remote programming. Uh, for this situation here, we'll set that to 67. And just for the sake of being consistent, we'll do this. It's also worth noting that if you have this tone plugged into your radio, uh, the repeater will not repeat uh, anything that is sent to the sysop channel. So now we have your sysop user set up. We have your main user set up. We can click back over here. You can see that our channel is set and good to go. So, so before programming the repeater, we will need to assess which COM port you are utilizing. So if you come over here to the device manager, give that a second to boot up. or a couple seconds. You can come down here to ports, common LPT, and as you can see listed here, the prolific USB to serial COM port is COM3, which is the device that we're using. So come over here to your program repeater, select COM3, and click start.
So once the data has been written into your repeater, you'll get this pop-up window here that says the data has been successfully written to the repeater. You can click OK and your repeater should be good to go. I've got the radio here, which if we plug into this, we should have all of our lights ignite and show us that we're uh, functional. This is KF0 Echo Kilo Roger. And as you can see there, all of the lights went up, fans activated for our uh, transmit only, and everything's good to go. You've programmed the repeater. And there you have it. That's the very basics to setting up and programming a BCR repeater system. If you need other information about our systems or need some assistance with your current system, click the link below. Thanks for watching, 73.